Well, tell me about how how did you identify the the thing I'm most interested in with this is that so you've got a you've got a gym, a series of gyms, mm -hmm. a business going, and you have fighters, yeah. right? People who get in the ring and fight, right. but then you also have people that aren't that, right? They're right. just like they're just to get in shape. Um, like how do you bridge that gap between the two? Right. So uh, a, a mentor of mine fairly early on helped me understand this concept. And that's that, and I think a lot of guys fall into this trap, guys and gals that own a martial arts studio or a boxing gym is they, they want to, they want to appear tough. They want to show yeah. what, you know, that, you know, they're competent fighters and all that type of stuff. And in like this guy Vernon told me years ago who ran two Krav Maga studios out in California, he's like, man, dude, those people will come anyways, right? If you're like legitimate and right, you actually like right. decently coach, they'll come anyway. Like you don't have to like advertise, but who's not going to come any ways is the general public, right? right? So we have people that it's like I tell our staff all the time. And it's the truth is we've had people say to me and come up to us and be like, yeah, I've been thinking about coming here for a year, two years. <laughs> and finally, yeah. I, you know, saw an ad. Finally, I talked to somebody. Da, da, da. Finally, I right. met you and your wife at a restaurant. And then I decided, okay, I'll come in and check you guys out. You don't <laughs> seem like a whole bunch of weirdos. And so that's just like so important. And then also too, is like, you can't keep your promises to your current clients or to your fighters or anything else. Uh, if your business is not successful to, so to give you an example, there's, you know, we, there aren't that many boxing gyms around and right. even Georgia or wherever. So <clears throat> There's one that's closing down right now, I know, uh, near uh, the Atlanta area. And mm. so it's like because that place, you know, it had a good coach. They they knew boxing very well, but it wasn't run as a, a successful business. And so right. therefore, eventually it closes down. You see that all the time, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, you have to balance that. So is that just something you just have to sit your fighters down and say, like, look, you know, you have to help these people. You know, you, you have to be part of this culture. Right. You're not here to just. You know, they're not just target practice for you, you know? Right. Oh, yeah. Well, so the big thing that I preach, and I think it's so important for someone that wants to have a sustainable coaching practice of any type is uh, in the martial arts world, mm -hmm. the boxing world, is <clears throat> I have seen so many coaches get uh, trapped up in the allure of somebody. And that somebody mm -hmm. oh, destroys man. their business, right? I'm sure you're thinking of probably wow. some situations you've seen like this. And so I, I've seen that play out so much where, you know, you got this guy that you're training that is like so dang talented da, 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 and it's so easy for you to just get wrapped up in that person but man you turn around five years later you've wasted a lot of time you they, they you know and they're ready to be done you know yeah. maybe their time is up with with fighting and that's cool yeah. but now your business hasn't grown uh your if anything has gone backwards and then sometimes that individual that you're like holding up as your elite person yeah. if they're not the right if you don't cultivate the right attributes in them then they're going to just turn off a bunch of people and uh, yeah. ruin the culture. So there's been times where I've had to remove sometimes my best fighters and part ways, you know, in a wow. professional sense okay. uh, because of making that call. And so like the analogy I use for all of our coaches so they understand is, Hey, I don't care if a young Mike Tyson walks through that door. Uh, and again, nothing against Mike Tyson, but if a right. young Mike Tyson walks through that door as he was at that time, right ultra talent, da, 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 but you know, the character traits weren't there at that time and right. he's going to destroy the culture. He's going to hurt people, but, 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 yeah. but it's, it's going to be nothing but drama and trouble. Yeah. And so we're going to ask him to, you know, go check out somebody else. Right. Well, I'll ask you, I'll ask you your, your opinion. You know, there's, yes, there's not a lot of boxing gyms. There's a lot of like jujitsu studios and lots of karate dojos and lots of kickboxing right. things. Um, right. And I, I've, I feel like uh, the business I'm running is I'm trying to what I'm trying to do is fill the gap between uh, just like fitness kickboxing, you know, where it's like turn on the trap music and we dance around and do, <laughs> and then like fighters like, right. like this is a gym where there's sharks, right. you know, right, they're right. trying to do that. And I'm trying to fill that gap where it's like we do those things, but we do it light and we do it friendly. And this right. is what we're here to do. And we get in shape doing it. But you also learn those skills. I mean. Do you, do you find yourself sort of like living in that world? Yeah, that's exactly. So yeah. how I represent our franchise proposition, but also, you know, just us as a model is like you said, the gap, right? Mm -hmm. So articulate it specifically with boxing gyms, you know, you have the, the gritty boxing gym hole in the wall, which is what yeah. I grew up in basically. Yep. Yep. And then you have the boutique 
uh, mm-hmm. fitness wearing exercise uh, wearing yeah. boxing yeah, gloves. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's a huge gap. Yeah. And there's a lot of people, men and women, both that they're like, dude, I want something that's like not the freaking trashy boxing gym where it's literally seriously dangerous and everyone yeah. has a freaking attitude and they're yeah. bullies. Yeah. Um, not that all are like that, but a lot no, are. But yeah. And We're going then, with then, generalities. Yeah. Right. And then and then you got the other one where it's like, you know, someone's just like doing this on a bag. Yeah. And like the instructor's like, yeah, dude, go get it, yeah. man. <laughs> You're sweating. Yeah. We won. <laughs> So, yeah, I find that. Why do you think that is, man? What's your what's your read on that? Why do you think that's the culture that we deal with? Because well, I grew up that way too. Like, yeah. you know, early on, I mean, I, I, the karate I studied, it was a, it was very clean, it was done right. But everything else I've ever tried, it's always in like a, like, kind of sketch, you know? Right. Well, so <laughs> the one thing is that think about combat sports in general. It it really attracts probably two main types of people. Okay. So it has a type of person that wants, you know, some reasons I'm sure you got into it and mm-hmm. same with myself is, you know, you, you want to, you want to better yourself. You want to be more capable, more competent right. and have more confidence or more confidence from that confidence. But then there's this other side of folks that do have success with combat sports as well. And sometimes people come for this reason and then they change later, <laughs> but is they actually like hurting people. Right. So they have a little bit of that, you know, and and they or maybe they like hurt on themselves. I've seen literally masochistic fighters that I've worked with in the past Mm -hmm. where they're a glutton for punishment in a sense. And it's just really weird. So anyway, so you have those two extreme personalities. And uh, yeah. And if you have too much of the ones and I just I see it so often, you know, these 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 guys and that want to be bullies and want to uh literally exploit other people also too another thing as far as the boxing round that maybe isn't there for the kickboxing and or maybe a little bit for kickboxing but not so much for karate and jujitsu is that um there there you know i'm I'm very much pro capitalism but there is a uh but there's a a challenge when you have uh a, a fighter that again like i mentioned earlier maybe you've sunk five years into and you want them to go pro and they want to go pro and then You'll, you'll start doing things just differently uh, because you're, you're trying to make good on a financial investment and uh, and you make mm-hmm. a lot of mistakes. And, 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 and that's one thing, one reason why I took a couple steps back from pro boxing. Uh, some of my fight, uh, some people I was working with because it was too much, a little bit too much, not all of it, but a little bit too much of human exploitation. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, some of these small cards like in the Southeast and stuff like that, where, they're just bringing in people to get beat the hell out of. Uh, and I've literally seen people in the out of town dressing room who are, who are mentally disabled, disabled. And uh, yeah, they shouldn't be fighting and yeah. they shouldn't even be competing as a, as an amateur or as a right. novice. Right. So. Well, that's kind of part of the, that's kind of part of the business though. Right. I mean, of yeah. kind of setting up a fighter. If you're thinking a year from now to try to get them where they, where you want them to go, you kind of set them up, right. You give them a sure. sort of a trail of, of wins. 